Hi and welcome. So in this video, we're going to start talking about how we find eigenvalues and how this relates to something called the characteristic polynomial. So our goal is that we're hoping to find a procedure or an algorithm that will help us find the special values lambda, so our eigenvalues, that have this property a times v equals lambda times v. And this is in specific cases where we have a square matrix a and a non-zero vector v. So we are considering this special case with eigenvectors and eigenvalues, and given a matrix A, we just want to be able to find the eigenvalues, and then in the future we're also going to be able to find the eigenvectors. But for now, we're just trying to find the eigenvalues, and we're looking for a procedure that we can follow each time in order to do this. So okay, let's unpack a few things. We're starting with A times V equals lambda times V. This is the special case of AX equals B that we're considering. We're considering the special case where A times V is just V scaled by lambda. So let's manipulate this a little bit and see what we can find. So I'm going to take that lambda times V and subtract it over to the left-hand side. So now I'm looking at A times V minus lambda times V, and this is equal to zero. Specifically, we're gonna write zero with a vector symbol on it to represent that zero is a vector. So this is just the vector with all of the components being zero. Then I'm trying to do some factoring here since both of these terms have a V in them. What I'm going to do is think about lambda times V as actually taking the identity matrix and multiplying it by V and also scaling by lambda. So we're gonna write that as lambda times the identity times V. We can do this because the identity times the vector V is just V. So we can rewrite the vector V as this multiplication. So we do this so that each of the terms we're looking at has a matrix in it. So we have A, the matrix in the first term, and I, the matrix for the identity in the second term. And now we're gonna factor out our vector V. So trust me, this is all for good reason. So we're gonna do A minus lambda times the identity, and that entire quantity is multiplied by V. Specifically, A minus lambda I is a matrix. So we're taking this new matrix and multiplying it by V, and this is telling us that it sends V to the zero vector. So we started by looking at the matrix transformation A, and now we're looking at a new matrix transformation, which is A minus lambda I, and we know that that matrix is sending the vector V to zero. So writing this in terms of our new language, we would say that if lambda is an eigenvalue, corresponding with eigenvector v, then the matrix A minus lambda i will send the vector v to the zero vector. Okay, so why are we doing all of this? My main claim that's going to help us come up with our procedure is that this statement here implies that A minus lambda i is singular, or not invertible. So we're trying to relate this new concept back to the old concepts that we've already learned, and my claim here is that by writing it in this way, we can say that A minus lambda I is not invertible. It does not have an inverse. So I'm gonna walk through the argument a little bit here. Typically, this argument relies on a conversation about vector spaces and some more complicated things around matrix transformations. So in case you've seen this concept in another setting and you're more used to seeing it in terms of vector spaces, that's totally fine. I'm just trying to give a version of this argument that doesn't involve that and is a little more simplistic. So I don't know if I'd call this a formal proof, but let me walk you through the argument that makes sense to me. So, okay, I'm telling you that A minus lambda I is singular, so it does not have an inverse. What would happen if it does have an inverse? So what would happen if our matrix A minus lambda I is invertible? Okay, so what that would mean is that if we started with A minus lambda I times our vector V, and that was equal to the zero vector, if it has an inverse, we should be able to multiply by the inverse on both sides. So I should be able to multiply by A minus lambda I inverse. So that's a big matrix, whatever that inverse is. I should be able to multiply by it on both sides. So on the left-hand side, when we take the matrix and multiply it by its inverse, they should undo each other and just become the identity matrix. So by definition, the inverse times the original matrix. When we do that multiplication, we just get the identity. 
However, if we look at the right-hand side, when I do the inverse matrix times the zero vector, that's just going to become zero. So we're starting with a vector that has zero in all of the components, so we really can't do anything to that vector. Anything we multiply by those components is just going to become zero, and so this entire right-hand side is still the zero vector. And so what I'm getting is that I have the identity times the vector v is equal to the zero vector. And this is only true if v is the zero vector to begin with. So the identity just takes the vector and gives it back. So the only way that we're going to get zero out is that if we started with zero in the first place. But we specifically said we didn't want this to be true when we defined what an eigenvector is. We don't want to look at the cases where the eigenvector is zero. Those ones are boring. They don't tell us very much. We specifically want to look at the cases where v isn't zero. And so we have a contradiction here. If a minus lambda i has an inverse, that means that v is zero, and we already said that isn't true, so it must be the case that a minus lambda i does not have an inverse. So okay, hopefully you can sort of walk through that and believe me, but the main thing is that we need to know that a minus lambda i is singular, and this is important because it relates back to the determinant. So. Since a minus lambda i is singular, meaning it's not invertible, does not have an inverse, we know that the determinant of this matrix has to equal zero. So we have this from before, that a singular matrix will have a determinant of zero, and this formula here, that the determinant of a minus lambda i equals zero, this is what we're going to use to solve for lambda, where lambda are our eigenvalues. Oof, okay, that's a lot. But really, we just need to get to this place where we're looking at the determinant of a minus lambda i and setting it equal to zero. This is what we're going to use to find our eigenvalues. So we'll get to an example in just a minute, but I want to give us just a little more vocabulary. So when we do the computation where we take the determinant of a minus lambda i, this is going to result in a polynomial where the variable is lambda. Remember, lambda is our unknown, it's what we're trying to solve for. So we're going to get a polynomial, and we give this polynomial a specific name. We call it the characteristic polynomial. I like to think that this polynomial characterizes the eigenvalues. I'm not positive that's where the word came from, but that's how I remember what it means. So when we take the determinant, this gives us the polynomial, and then we're going to find our eigenvalues lambda by setting that polynomial equal to zero. So you might hear the phrase, finding the roots of the characteristic polynomial. And so this is part of the process we do when we're finding the eigenvalues, is that we have this polynomial and we're finding the roots of it, which means we're setting it equal to zero and finding the solutions. Okay, so I know we've gone through a lot. Let's try an example where we practice some of this vocabulary and see this in action. So let's find the characteristic polynomial and the eigenvalues for the matrix A equals 4, 2 in the first row and 1, 3 in the second row. So this is the matrix we actually used in the previous video. So if you've done that work recently, you probably already know what the eigenvalues are because we found them a different way. We're going to start fresh in this example and just look at the matrix and go through the process for finding the eigenvalues. So our first step is to set up the matrix A minus lambda i, because our ultimate goal is to take the determinant of this matrix and set it equal to zero. So I'm gonna put A, my matrix, four, two, one, three, and I'm gonna subtract lambda, that's our unknown, times the identity, one, zero, zero, one. And now I just need to simplify this and put it all together in one matrix. So I'm going to distribute that lambda into the identity, so I have lambdas on the diagonal here, and now I'll just put these two matrices together. So I'm doing four minus lambda, two minus zero, one minus zero, and three minus lambda. And then those minus zeros, they don't do anything, so I'm just gonna take those away. So I'm getting this as my resulting matrix. I wrote out a lot of steps here, but basically you can just take the diagonal elements and subtract lambda on those elements because we're taking the identity with lambda multiplied and subtracting it, so it's always gonna end up like this. So I have four minus lambda and three minus lambda on my diagonal, and then my other elements stay the same. Okay, now let's compute the determinant of this matrix, A minus lambda i. So I'll use these vertical bars for my determinant, 
And for a two by two matrix, our determinant is just A, D, minus B, C. So I'm doing four minus lambda times three minus lambda, and then I'll subtract two times one. So now that we're here, you should finally start to see a polynomial coming out. So I have an unknown here, it's lambda, and so this is a polynomial in terms of lambda, where that's my variable. So typically I like to expand these first two terms that are being multiplied and then combine like terms after that. So I'm getting 12 minus four lambda minus three lambda plus lambda squared when I do the distribution on those first two terms. And then I have a minus two. So reordering this, I have lambda squared minus seven lambda. I've put together that negative four and negative three lambda. And then I have plus 10. And here, this result is our characteristic polynomial. So lambda squared minus seven lambda plus 10 is our characteristic polynomial. So in the first step, we set up the matrix. And then in the second step, this is where we found the characteristic polynomial. So in the next step, we're going to find our eigenvalues by setting this characteristic polynomial equal to zero. So we're setting the determinant equal to zero. So I have lambda squared minus seven lambda plus 10 equals zero, and I'm simply going to factor this polynomial. So here I'm seeing that I have lambda minus five times lambda minus two. That gives me the plus 10 for the multiplication and the minus seven for the addition. Then I can just set each of these terms equal to zero. So I have lambda minus five equals zero and lambda minus two equals zero. And this results in my two eigenvalues, lambda equals five and lambda equals two. So there we go. So by setting the determinant of a minus lambda i equal to zero and solving for lambda, we found our eigenvalues. And remember, these are our special values where we can take a times an eigenvector and we simply scale that eigenvector by this eigenvalue. Okay, so that's it for this example. In the next video, we do two more examples where we look at another two by two matrix and then also do a three by three matrix and find the eigenvalues. Thanks so much for watching and I will talk to you in the next one.